now that you've read or uh, had me read to you the uh, CDC's zombie pandemic graphic novel, let's look at their webpage on Preparedness 101 Zombie Apocalypse. So you're going to write a blog post. Uh, really, your blog post is going to be how to prepare for an emergency. Um, and we could call it something like emergency preparedness or something like that. But if you want to go the zombie route, you could do uh, an example blog post like this uh, CDC webpage. And this one, you know, they actually give uh, some history and links to zombies. So if you're not familiar with zombies, this could teach you a little bit about them, just for fun. Uh, so let's look through here. Walking Dead, Walking Dead fans, check out our latest post. So if you click on that, let's see what they've got here. So this is their blog, and they've got teachable moments, courtesy of The Walking Dead on AMC. Oh, and they have probably spoilers here on um, uh, the show. But rule number one, make a pit stop. Fill up before it's too late. So, yeah. Ooh, siphoning gas with your mouth, that's gross. Uh, so always keep your tank at least half full. You can avoid having lingering taste of petrol, which is gasoline, uh, linger in your mouth and have enough fuel to get out of Dodge before a disaster. And that's true for any disaster. First aid kit, rule number two, never leave home without it. Rule number three, clean water. And that looks like things they learned uh, from Walking Dead. So you can read that one, get a little information uh, about the Walking Dead. So they say here, starting here, there are all kinds of emergencies out there that we can prepare for. Take a zombie apocalypse, for example. That's right. I said, zombie apocalypse. You may laugh now, but when it happens, you'll be happy you read this. And hey, maybe you'll even learn a thing or two about how to prepare for a real emergency. So that's the point, folks. It's for real emergencies. Zombies just don't exist, and they, they just, they're not going to be a thing. So don't worry about that. So this section here has a brief his history of zombies, uh, Gives you a link here to Resident Evil, though they have a whole bunch of films on that. And it's, like I mentioned in class, it's based on a game. I think the game came first. Pretty sure. They've got the Night of the Living Dead. And then there's a Z zombie survival guide, which, let's open that one, identifies the cause of zombies as a virus called solanum. So this here, the Zombie Survival Guide, is a Wikipedia page with great information uh, on the humorous book named the Zombie Survival Guide. So that'll give you stuff there if you're interested to learn about that one. And if you're a zombie fan, you know, maybe you'll read about it. Also gives you links to, uh, let's see. Other zombie origins shown in films include radiation from a destroyed NASA Venus probe, as in Night of the Living Dead, as well as mutations of existing conditions such as prions, mad cow disease, measles, and rabies. Now, these are real. So you can read on Wikipedia what a prion is. And it says here they are misfolded proteins. See there? And remember, uh, meat and and uh, things like our hair, our skin, our organs uh, are all made out of proteins. So proteins are very important for our development. That's why you have to eat proteins, whether you get it plant-based protein or animal-based proteins, like, like chicken, uh, beef, pork. Those are animal-based. And if you're a vegan or a vegetarian, you got to make sure you get your beans and lentils and plant food that has the amino acids to make all the proteins you need. So the problem with these misfolded proteins is they have the ability to transmit that misfolded shape onto normal variants of the same protein. So they get the good protein and, and they make them have the bad shape. Uh, and they characterize several fatal and transmissible neurodegenerative diseases in humans and many other animals. Neuro, that N 
E-U-R-O means brain. So neurodegeneration is the progressive loss of structure and function of neurons. Neurons are brain cells. So they could kill your brain cells, and that's bad. So some neurodegenerative degenerative diseases uh, include the amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's, fatal familial insomnia, and Huntington's disease. And I don't want a brain disease. I, I like my brain a lot. So that's what prions are, and those are the diseases they cause. Now, mad cow disease was a thing uh, that, that struck a while back. And as it says, it, it, it struck cows. Commonly known as mad cow disease, the bovine spongiform encephalopathy, or BSE for short, is a neurodegenerative disease of cattle. Symptoms include abnormal behavior, trouble walking, and weight loss. Later in the course of the disease, the cow, be the cow becomes unable to function normally. And the time between infection and onset of symptoms is generally four to five years. Uh, now, this disease was bad because, so it, it was caused by a misfolded protein, uh, thought to be caused by, uh, known as a prion. And the cattle that were infected by being fed meat and bone meal. That was bad. Cows should eat grain, not uh, other stuff. And this, this bone meal contained the remains of cattle who, you know, feeding cattle, cattle, that's just gross, uh, that spontaneous developed the disease. So it was an outbreak that started in the United Kingdom, that's England, of cattle who spontaneously, I mean, due to the practice of feeding meat and bone meal to young calves of dairy cows. So, yeah, this was a scary disease uh, when it first came out. So that's one that caused a scare worldwide. Now, measles you've probably heard of, and rabies, which uh, if an animal infected with rabies bites a human, we can get infected with rabies, and ew, that's just not good. So this, these are examples of mutations uh, that a lot of zombie movies are based on. So I'm going to jump down here to Better Safe Than Zari because our zombie, happy uh, zombie apocalypse day, H-C-A-D, is based on this, this real life uh, preparedness 101. So here's what they say you should have in an emergency kit at home. One gallon of fresh water per person per day you think you're going to be quarantined. So if it's a week, that's seven days times if there's four people in your family that's times four that's how many gallons of water you need 28 gallons of water food so you want to have canned food because that can last for years without going bad and if you take medicines you got to have your medications because who knows if pharmacies will even be open or running and you want to have tools duct tape help with everything. you got to have battery-powered uh, radios, especially the ones that you can charge yourself. Battery-powered radios and flashlights that you can charge the battery. Awesome. You want to have bleach, soap, towels, fresh blankets, fresh clothes that are clean, uh, a bedding, like if you got clean sleeping bags, that is great. And if you have to evacuate, your parents probably going to take their driver's licenses, your birth certificates, inf uh, documents that it's a pain to get them uh, replaced. And of course, first aid. Got to have first aid supplies. Uh, and they mention here tornadoes and hurricanes as emergencies that these supplies would be really helpful. Then they've got a section here on having an emergency plan. So you could write how to plan for an emergency in your blog post, too, not just a list of necessary supplies. And then there's this section here, never fear, CDC is ready. If zombies did start roaming the streets, CDC would conduct an investigation much like any other disease outbreak. 
CDC would provide technical assistance to cities, states, or international partners dealing with a zombie infestation. This assistance might include consultation, lab testing and analysis, patient management and care, tracking of contacts, and infection control, including isolation and quarantine. It's likely that an investigation of this scenario would seek to accomplish several goals. Determine the cause of the illness, the source of the infection, virus, or toxin. Learn how it is transmitted and how readily it is spread. How to break the cycle of transmission and thus prevent further cases, and how patients can be treated. Not only would scientists be working to identify the cause and cure of the zombie outbreak, but CDC and other federal agencies would send medical teams and first responders to help those in affected areas. I will be volunteering the young nameless disease detectives for the fieldwork. And then they have a link where you can learn more about what the CDC does to prepare for and respond to emergency of all kinds, especially the emergency we're going through now in real life on Earth. Not in our Star Trek game of uh, the zombie apocalypse in the planet Akalia. Or I should say, on the planet. Not in the planet. And then they've got the cdc.gov link here so you can read more. Uh, and look, they've got other links and comments here. So that's what you need to learn from this link here. Together with the graphic novel, uh, the last page of it, and this web page, you should be able to compose an amazing blog post sharing what you've learned about how to prepare for an emergency, even an emergency like a zombie apocalypse. Good luck. I can't wait to read your posts.